This is where we live in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. This is Nobby's Headland and the lighthouse, the entrance to Newcastle Harbour. Here we have the surf. The goat shed is only about 12, 13 kilometres from there. There's the surf club. This is a beautiful place. Here's some of the skyline of the city of Newcastle. And moving around and looking across toward the harbour. Here's some more of the skyline of the city of Newcastle. This is our harbour. It sits on the Hunter River. And looking at you there is the old wheat silo. Newcastle has been very much associated with exporting coal, wheat, etc. The mouth of the harbour, we have a, a boat coming in. It now comes into the Hunter River, which empties into the Tasman Sea. Newcastle is the seventh largest city in Australia. We look to the north and we have the suburb of Stockton and the coal loading ships are beyond that point over there. You're looking at the gun emplacement at Fort Scratchley. These guns were fired in World War II at miniature Japanese submarines trying to get into the harbour of Newcastle to attack the BHP, a large steel mill plant which is now no longer and that's known as Fort Scratchley. So the goat shed is located in the city of Lake Macquarie, which is a subsidy to Newcastle, and we're in the suburb of Glendale. The significance of this building here uh, is where the former home of A. Hankin and Company were. Now, some of you may be aware that Hankin made pinball machines starting in 78 with, I think it was the FJ Holden, Orbit One, uh, just to name a few machines they did. Now, Newcastle is largely regarded as the pinball capital of Australia, and this is Derby Street in Newcastle, where that was. Hankins still operate today, but they only do video jukeboxes and pool tables. So this is where I actually live. This has been my home for the last 44 years. Moved here in 1978, I believe it was. I live in the leafy suburb of New Lambton Heights, which is approximately five kilometers from the goat shed. That photo was taken at Nobby's Beach in 2007. The bulk carrier Pasha Bolka washed ashore after a heavy seas with an enormous east coast low, right up almost to the promenade on Nobby's Beach. Those photos went viral all around the world. Some of you may have already seen those. Okay, so we're just in my backyard now. And what we'll do, we'll head on down here to the shed. That's, and we'll have a look at my pinball machines. Well, here they are. There's my banker ball. My very favourite machine, Tropic Isle. There's Aquarius. My King of Diamonds. And my sing-along. My Apollo. My Full House. And my soccer. This is the last game that I bought and Graham and I restored that last year. It was a real mess. Had to repaint it. There you go, Graham. Free-handed those stencils and away we went. Just part of my little workbench that I had made. And there's a sign that my daughter and um, son-in-law had made for me a couple of Christmases ago. Right, so here we are. We've just arrived at Glendale at the goat shed. This is Graham's car. 
a house there. There's my car. And let's walk down the driveway and get closer to this shed, the famous goat shed. We just had those barn doors put on in January this year. So they haven't been painted yet. We've got to get around to that. At some time in the future, too busy fixing pinball machines to do any painting. So in we go. And we'll have a look. And we'll see right up the top of the goat shed, a goat. There you go. Let's go inside. In we go. This is sort of the receiving area of the goat shed. There's a bingo machine there we're working on. A few other machines we have. Got plenty of work. There's a nice, nice example of, a, of sweethearts. Just give you a very quick look at that. Got a beautiful play field, this one. There's a Bronco we're working on. Some of our parts. And let's go into the main shed. This is the goat shed. Here we go. There's one of our workbenches, polishing and grinding. Ultrasonic cleaner. Another workbench, a bit messy at the moment, that one. Here's our mascot, Daisy Dog. And, and Spanky. here's Graham and Spanky. Dirty goat. So, the world famous Spanky. Uh, g'day. I've been asked just to say a couple of words about the goat shed and about um, my life fixing pinball machines and life in general. Um, well, I started um, playing pinball machines back in the mid 60s when I was only a young bloke. And uh, from that, I grew a passion to playing machines. But I never dreamed that one day I would, well, I would be fixing them and, um, with, uh, with Kim. Well, a bit of background. Um, look, I, I, I finished work through um, ill health back in the uh, 1990 and it was a time that I decided to get back into pinballs because I basically had nothing else to do uh, due to illness and um, I've been collecting pinballs since 1985 when I bought my first machine which was a Bally Bingo and I was unfortunate enough or lucky enough to know no one to how to fix it so I had to learn on my own and um, through learning how to fix a bingo machine I progressed to fixing pinball machines which um, really was nothing nothing in comparison and I still have a lot of the bingo machines but probably pinball machines is um, right up there and um, Kim and myself fix pinball machines every day except Sunday only for half days 8 till 12 and um, We've sort of grown to the stage now that we throw ideas off each other and we can fix machines um, very confidently and we don't have any major problems. Now, I've been at this residence since 1965 and during the early days when um, I used to fix pinball machines out here, it was only just this shed here and uh, the front shed wasn't really used, it was just full of my dad's stuff and um, I used to work out here with my father fixing machines and um, he would be totally amazed at what I do and actually it was very funny because he didn't like me playing pinball machines when I was young and um, he, he would always be amazed at what I used to do and um, unfortunately he passed away uh, 15 odd years ago and well I just sort of like plodded along on my own, didn't do too much and I'd fix the occasional machine here and there and um, I still had a lot of interest in it. I had pinball machines everywhere but other things was happening. I was, you know, looking after my brother who was sick and then um, unfortunately he passed away and around the same time Kim was looking for somewhere to um, keep him busy and keep him out of the pub since he um, was just retiring at the time. And so he come along and um, had a real passion, the same as I have. And um, we sort of like, I was a bit lazy, so he sort of got me happening again. And um, we both merged together and I showed him what 
I knew it wasn't a great deal, but I think I think you can't learn these things unless you have the passion to do it. Now we don't we we are not here to make money. We here are here to help people, and it's a um, as Kim probably and mentioned, we do training courses to help other people. Of course, this is not going to happen forever, but. We're good to each other, and um, I'm sort of like the quiet achiever. I'm in the background. I don't say a great deal. I'm not a great speaker, but I, I try to do my best. And um, I've been busy over the years, and and around the year um, 2020, uh, no, no, the year 2000, I was helping Marco Rosignoli write his um, pinball book, the complete pinball book, which um, which I've been told is the best-selling pinball book in the world, which I don't doubt because it's a very, very good book. And I helped him on that one very, not not a great deal, just a few things because he come here to take photos and he was totally amazed at what I've had and um, whatever else. And uh, and then on his second book, I helped him a lot. We went away and I was with the, taking photos with him, whatever. And and then um, he suggested that I, um, if possible, we could collaborate and write two or three books together, and uh, which we did. We wrote two, and um, I think two was enough because it's an absolute lot of work, absolute heap of work. You've got no idea. And um, so after that, oh, so we finished the books in 2007. I think it was 2006, 2007. And as I said, like I just slowed down a bit and do my own thing, and Kim coming along, and to this day, we're just coming down here every day, work, 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 have a great time. It's just like a really like a men's shed where people turn up, talk pinball, talk talk rubbish, rip at each other, have a great time. Anyone's welcome to drop in. Um, and as we said, we knock off at lunchtime, that's enough for us. And um, we don't really want it to be a business because we'll get sick of it. Because even though we love pinball, we want to do um, our downtime as well. And I don't know, I don't really have too much more to say, just that we hope that pinball keeps going forever and we hope to keep the goat shed going as long as we can. And um, I thank you for your time. So, thank you. So, everybody, that was a great insight from Graham McGuinness into a little bit about his life in pinball and an author of pinball. So, I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible in Chicago in October at Pinball Expo. So we'll see you then. Don't forget to stop it and say hi. Just on a further note, I'll be collaborating at Expo with Mark Gibson. Mark's well known for his site Fun with Pinball and he'll have his interactive displays there. And we're hoping... Um, that you'll all come along and see Mark. And um, at this point also we're planning on having an evening with Mark and myself, just having a chat about general repairs, etc. So that'll be worth looking forward to as well. So we hope to see you there also. Chicago and USA, here we come.